This is just a quick clarification. I've seen a couple of comments saying, I don't know, that it's only those who know Islam is true but still arrogantly reject it that are the ones who will go to hell for eternity. I am of course well aware of that and I have talked about this before in previous videos such as my video on the meaning of kafir. Whenever I talk about eternal hell in Islam I am talking about such people. I am not talking about those who never heard the message. However, that doesn't mean eternal torture is okay. As I explained in a previous video, eternal hell is indefensible, even if it is only for the very worst of the worst arrogant disbelievers. Torturing them without end is simply insanely sadistic and utterly indefensible. Another point I have made in the past is that this belief in the definition of kafir as someone who knows Islam is true but arrogantly conceals it and, and denies it makes no sense at all. Think about it. If they know Islam is true, then they know they will burn in hell for eternity. In the unlikely event of there actually being someone like that, they would obviously be mentally unwell and in need of help, not punishment. So let's get one thing straight. People disbelieve because they don't believe the claims they are being presented with are true, plain and simple. It's not because they secretly know that Islam is true but are hiding it. Such a claim makes no sense at all. And since we're on the subject of people who conceal the truth, who really is the one concealing the truth? God knows with infallible certainty exactly what would convince every single one of his creation that Islam is the truth. He knew full well when he set up this earthly test, it would be open to huge doubt. In fact, he has purposely turned signposts around to point in the opposite direction so as to confuse and mislead perfectly decent and reasonable people. He chose to keep himself hidden and allow his existence to be a matter of debate. Instead of making sure there was plenty of empirical, historical and archaeological evidence to support everything he said in the Qur'an, so people would immediately recognise it as the truth, he allowed us to find evidence that appears to contradict it. He has chosen not to protect any solid evidence from the 124,000 prophets he is supposed to have sent to mankind, allowing all trace of them to be lost. He chose not to protect the Bible, leading to millions of perfectly virtuous and loving people to commit shirk, the thing he hates most and will never forgive. He made the earth contain fossil evidence that seems to point to a long evolutionary and cumulative development of the human species, resulting in imperfections, vestial structures and redundant organs, such as an appendix, rather than the instant and perfectly planned creation of Adam and Eve. He told us about the tribes of Gog and Magog, trapped behind a great iron wall, yet instead of leaving solid evidence to support the Qur'an so people would believe it, he made it look highly unlikely that two tribes of humans could survive and remain undetected for 2,000 years. Instead of providing evidence that some humans in the past lived to a thousand years old, he made Prophet Noah's age of over 950 years, as stated in the Qur'an, seem very implausible. He allowed psychological evidence to be overwhelmingly against the assertion that hitting a wife can solve marriage problems. Instead of allowing humans to uncover the remains of King Solomon's palace or historical records attesting to his mighty kingdom, he allowed no trace of its existence to be found. Even the two most successful methods God chose to spread Islam conquest and birth rates, do not inspire confidence in the truth of the message. Then if things could not get any worse, he set the most obscenely cruel and sadistic punishment imaginable, eternal torture, while calling himself the most merciful of the merciful. In short, God appears to have done his best to facilitate doubt and disbelief amongst billions of people, without it having any bearing 
on their virtue or lack of virtue. Then he set an unimaginably excessive and cruel punishment for failure. Tell me, who is the villain here?